Hey everybody, and we're back to check off another day in our countdown series. We're counting down the days until the end of the year through the holiday season, if you are doing this in sync with us. So we have made it to day 25 out of 30, counting down. We are also going to be on a countdown timer again. And we have a weighted set coming at us today, which I'm very excited about. It's been a little while since we've hauled some weights around and I am ready. So I have a set of 15s, a set of 20s, and a set of 25s that I'm going to be using. I'm going to be using one set per block of work. We have three different blocks. We're going to get a quick little warm up going on here and then we'll get going on our sets. So join me on your hands and knees. Inhale, open your chest. Exhale and round. This is always a great way to get started. Check in with what's going on in your spine and your back, your shoulders, your hips even the core, level off and let your hips just rotate left and right. Feel that little bit of extra pull through the sides of the glutes, those hips. <clears throat> okay, and then go ahead and bring your right leg up outside of your right hand. And we're just gonna do a little hamstring slide, which is a slide into the hamstring here, and then a slide into the hip flexor here, just going back and forth. Keeping everything moving. We're not really holding anything for a sustained period of time. Still getting into the full body today. Not really crunching anything cardio, but usually when you get some weights going, heart rate will come up a little bit. Switch sides if you haven't already. That hinge forward, that hinge back. Good job. Let's go ahead and hit up our downward facing dog. Big wide spread open fingertips, push into your thumb and first finger, hips go up and back, and then pedal out your feet. Feel a nice long stretch through the hamstrings, a big grab through the core, a big grab through your back, and your elbows kind of tighten in to point down at your toes, or toward your toes. Level off and hold everything here, grab the core, a couple deep breaths. And then widen your feet and walk your hands back to your feet. And we're going to go into our low squat. All right. So we have 30 seconds on a timer. No transition time. We're going to do three exercises, at least for our first two blocks. And each exercise is going to be on that 30 second timer. So our first set is going to be a weighted bug, a skull crusher, and an alternating press. So that is why I'm going with my... 20s for that one. Um, I'm going to be holding 120 for my overhead pull, my weighted dead bug. And then I'm going to be using one for my skull crusher and then two, obviously, for my alternating press, holding a glute bridge within if you would like. So have your one extra weight on the ready. Your other one also set to go. And we're going to get going on our first block here. Ready? Set and go. So slide that core strong, strong. Reach your arms overhead as your leg extends out in front of you. Getting into that upper back here, but really take your focus into the core. You should feel quite a lot of flexion supporting the extension of your leg and the arms. Flexion. Contraction and time. Okay, push into your glutes and then skull crusher. Your elbows pull toward one another just so that they are parallel. The upper arm is parallel. Relax your neck. Enjoy the fact that you're here. Strengthening, building. Keep that core strong and time. Okay, now we're going to go into that alternating press. Hips go back up. Press one arm at a time. Elbow squeezes in tight. You've got to keep that core engaged. You've got to keep your lats going strong to support that press side to side so that you're not rotating in the back, right? We need the flexion of the back to hold support as we press one side and then the other. Time, okay, back to your weighted bug. Back 
back into that core. This is the main, we have one little core work in our second block, but this is our main core set. So really utilize it. Feel the arms lengthen out, but the back is what's controlling. Okay, up into your glute bridge, and we're in skull crushers. Neck is relaxed, core holds strong. Flex your glutes, push with those triceps. Set in with your breath. And time, back to your alternating press. If you can, keep those hips up. Get your glutes going along the way. You got it. We got it. Keep those wrists strong. So make sure that your palms aren't ripping back. Point your knuckles straight at the ceiling. Time. Back to our bug. Two sets down, two to go. 30 seconds is adding up. We're only three minutes in of work. So you should already be feeling that burn on the muscles. Keep your low back in contact with the ground. Time. Skull crushers. Keep dialed in, keep your form. Stay in it, even if you're starting to fatigue. That's good, push into the fatigue. See how much you've got. You're fine until you hit failure, so all right. Back in our alternating press. <clears throat> Push with those triceps. Whew. Flex through that core. Check in with the body. Push into the work. Push into the burn. You got it. Come on. Stay with me. Time. All right. Last round through. Weighted bug. Get into that upper back. Extend one leg. Contract. Pull it all back. <sighs> Work with your breath, especially with all of the contraction through the core and the abdomen. Time. Skull crushers. <sighs> One minute left of work. We've got it. Well, in this block. That's where we're set in right now, just focusing on the moment. Nice job. Stay with me. And then our alternating press. Keep your hips up if you can. Drive flexion into those glutes. Open that chest, roll the shoulders back, keep the elbows in tight, 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 tight on those elbows, wrists stay strong, time. Whew. All right, there was set four, fantastic job. We're gonna flip it around, take a little stretch before we come up and hit our next set. All right, reach your arms forward, nice full child's pose, get those elbows up off the ground for now. And just let the tailbone pull you back. Put your hands together. Put your elbows down. And then reach your fingers down the back. Ooh, feel those triceps stretch. <clears throat> oh, 
All right. Okay. Let's chat through our next round of work. I'm going to be going up in weight to my 25s. <clears throat> we're going to start with an oblique hinge. So we're getting into the obliques. I'm not going to hold my weights yet. I'm going to save that for my however many minutes of work. Um, you're going to hold those weights either side. And what we really want to watch for is that our flexion and contraction stability are coming through the rectus spinae, the core, and those obliques, right? <clears throat> so we're just going to hinge to the side, pull back to the middle, hinge to the side, pull back to the middle. Just a small, very, very focused move. Make sure the shoulders stay down. And then we're going to do a deadlift. Just hinge forward, press up. Y'all have done that before. And then a suitcase row. Stay in your hinge, row those elbows straight up. All right, so our three exercises, four rounds through. Ready, set, and go. If you need to take a break or put your weights down at any point, that's fine. It's your choice, it's your decision. Hopefully though, you'll feel the difference in muscles now, less into the triceps and the upper back until we hit that suitcase row, I guess. Five seconds, and then we're gonna transition to our deadlifts and time. Okay, hinge it forward. Legs are pretty straight, just that soft bend in the knee. Driving up through those heels to get your glutes active. We're inhaling down, exhaling up. Really tighten your elbows back toward your rib cage at the stand. And then you'll know that you're in the right spot, keeping the chest forward and the back flexed. And we're there. Okay, so now you're going to find that hinge, belly strong, palms face your thighs, pull those elbows up, just straight up. Build that upper back again. Keep your core strong. You need that strong core. In any hinge position. Time. All right, stand back up, stand tall, and then we're doing our oblique hinge. Nice hinge. Oh, feel that kind of stretch. And then pull back. Feel the deep muscles of the back and the core grab. Support. <sighs> Pulling the belly button back, wrapping all the way through. Time. Deadlifts. You got it. Five seconds. Squeeze those shoulder blades together as you drop and time. And then we're going to go to our suitcase rows. All right, hinge it forward. Pull those elbows. See if you can keep flexion and focus on your back. As the weights come back down, you've got it. Hold on to it. Stay strong. Three, two, and one. Stand tall. Back to our hinge. Halfway there. Two sets to go. These are actually really effective to do holding one side because you have to activate a little bit more stability through that core, erector spinae, deadlifts, when there's an unweighted side. You've got it. Grab into the core, lengthen those hamstrings, focus your glutes. You got it. Stay with it. Three, 
two, and one. All right. You don't need to be fast, especially depending on how much weight you chose to select. Use the back to pull those weights up. Three, two, and one. Last round through. My forearms are getting very tired and heated. I'm going to try my best. Stick with it. Tighten up those palms. Trying my best to get the weights into the meaty part of my hand. Then focus the work where I came for it. So there, obliques and core. Here, hamstrings and glutes. You got it. Okay. Suitcase rows. Woo. Long back, strong core. Strong back. Squeezing those shoulder blades together. Trying to keep your body still. So make sure you're not... Lifting and lowering, using momentum on the torso. Time oh, to get those weights up. All right. Whew. Challenging. That's good. I like the challenge. All right. Stretching your forearms. Ooh. Point your fingertips back at your knees. And then slowly just let your body. Start sitting back. Like I said, those definitely hit my forearms. If you're feeling it more in your back, hit a cat-cow, a child's pose. There is an aspect of forearms getting in the way when you're trying to go a little heavier. Try not to let it deter you. Build those forearms. Next time that you do an exercise, Maybe go down in weight. Don't worry as much about trying to keep the heavy weight if it, uh, it was all in the forearms this time. But go back. Bounce around. There's so only one way to keep it going, and that's to strengthen those forearms along the way as well. Okay, so now I'm going to hit my 15s. We're going to do renegade rows. <clears throat> if you do not do a renegade row, then you can do a locomotive. So renegade row, you'll be in a plank. You're going to row one arm and then the other with your weight. Um, a locomotive looks like this. You're going to pull those elbows side to side. We're going to do curls. We're going to do, you know, curls. A side raise. I think that one might get a little tough. And then we're going to do um, an alternating lunge. Getting back into those legs one last time. All right. This is our last block of work. We have plenty of time. It's only going to take us four minutes, and then we'll get a nice solid stretch at the end. Okay. Renegade rows to start. Start with your plank position. Ready, set, and go. So you're locking a lot of core and pulling the weights up with your back muscles. Keeping the core solid and locked. Trying to keep your hips level so they're not twisting much as you pull side to side. If it's too much putting your body weight on the handle, of the weight, you can always set your hand on the ground and just lift one weight at a time, alternate back and forth like that. All right, coming up, we have our curls. Be in control, both directions of the move. Keep those palms tucked in, your wrists, are not bending forward and back. Work those biceps. 
I'm not sure I'm going to be able to do side raises with these. I feel a little zonked. But we'll see. There's two. Three. Four. Don't know until you try. Seven. Now we only have eight seconds left. So I can sneak in a couple more. And then we'll worry about the next set when it gets here. Okay, step back lunges alternating left and right. Always keeping flexion in the back so that the arms aren't swinging. We don't want swinging arms. Tighten your glutes. Flex that core. Three, two, and one. Okay, back to our renegade rows. Woo! <clears throat> Plank it up. Find that core. We are getting another core exercise. What was I thinking? We get core through each block. Had our weighted bugs, our oblique hinges, and now our renegade rows. Three, two, and one. All right, I'm gonna enjoy a little hammer curl this time. Remember, you wanna make sure, squeeze the elbows in tight. Squeeze your shoulder blades together. And then make sure that your arms are dropping all the way down. You're not stopping halfway. Three, two, and one. Okay, side raise. Woo! See what we got. Engage the back. Use the shoulders. Oh. Time. Maybe I'll try one at a time the next round. Too much forward roll to try to get them up there. It's not worth it. It's a solid first round. Don't want to lose form. It's not worth it. Flex through that glute. Three, two, one, back to your renegade rows. <clears throat> Try to keep the core strong, the back lengthened. Three, two, and one. Oh, back to curls. Maybe a corkscrew curl this time. Shaking it up just a little. You're welcome to keep your strict curls as well. Keep the core strong so that you're not swaying. Time. All right, side raises. One. Oh. I don't know why I'm counting. See how many I can get, I guess. There it is. Flex into the back, strengthen through the shoulder time. Lunges. Line those knees and toes. Keep the front knee back behind your toe crease. The front lace of your shoe. Keep those feet hip width. 
You're not on a tight rope. Time. Okay. Our last round. <clears throat> Trying not to poke your butt up in the air. Okay, back to those curls. One at a time. Squeeze those shoulder blades back. Roll your shoulder heads back, time. All right, side raise. Stay healthy, stay safe, keep form. That is it for me. I'm gonna finish here. No shame, I got to failure. It's always good, always good to get to failure. Well, maybe not always, occasionally. <clears throat> Or I'm going to tell myself that anyway. No, it actually is true. Finding that failure point. Not all the time, but on occasion throughout your sets, getting to failure is a good sign. You're trying to push for progressions. You're not becoming complacent. Time. The body will adapt. All right. Good job. Okay, perfect timing. Come on down to the ground with me. And I'm gonna start back with those forearms. Turn your fingertips again towards your knees and then hinge back. Good work, I told you your heart rate would get up just a little. Nice little raise. Okay, come to your hands and knees. We're gonna thread the needle. Start with that lift. Right arm rolls up, twist, lift nice and high, and then thread your arm under. Reach as far as you can. Oh, and then get that stretch on the outside of the shoulder. Enjoy some nice deep breaths. See if you can Regulate your breathing. You can box breathe. You can draw in. Let's switch up to the other side. You can draw in for two counts. And try exhaling for four. Reach under. Let your hips draw. So if your left arm is tucking under, let your hips kind of roll and pull to the left. All right, nice job. Bring your right leg forward. We're gonna start with a shortened lunge, so not our super long lunge. Still tucking that, the hips under, and then sliding forward. So you tuck in that hip on the left side, especially feel your hands, or your hip flexor and your quad, and then we're gonna reach that left arm up and then over. Lift up out of your hip, reach over. Try to keep your chest open and the shoulder back. Sit tall. Grab your right hand on the outside of the left elbow or the back of the elbow. And then keep pushing that hand down your back. Get a tricep stretch. Keep tucking through the hips, sliding forward. You can feel that hip flexor continue to open the quad. Perfect. And then bring that left arm across. Ooh, get that stretch through those shoulders that we burned out. I don't know about you, but I burned mine out. Okay, extend your right leg forward. Pull the toes up and then reach your chest toward the toes. 
Keep your hamstrings flexible. That's gonna help keep your low back happy. Okay, and then we're gonna go ahead and hit that pigeon. Cross your foot over to the other side of the mat. Walk your left foot back. Maybe lower down onto your elbows if you can. Let's go ahead and check in with our breath here. Such a great pose to do it. So I'm gonna choose to do two counts in on an inhale and four counts out on an exhale. Box breathing is the same amount of counts. Inhale, hold, exhale, hold. All right, go ahead and push yourself up. Fantastic jump. And let's go to the other side. Okay, so now our left leg's forward. Tuck the hips under. Find that pelvic tuck. Still gently engage the core. Then just slide forward till you feel that hip flexor. Get a nice little stretch and pull all the way down into your quad. Reach your right arm up and then lean over. <clears throat> so that erector spinae that we worked in our oblique hinges. Now we're getting a nice solid stretch here. The QL, I've been talking about that because that's what I've been dealing with. So as I learn things, I hope to be able to bring them. My plan is to bring them to you so that we're all growing together. Back to center, stretch your tricep. So the QL is what attaches your pelvis to the spine, a muscle deep inside, nice little band, and it can get tight. If you feel like you have low back pain or hip pain, there's a chance. That's what it is. This has been a new sensation for me, one that I have not been okay with. Grab your shoulder. Low back pain is not something that's normally in my wheelhouse. So I have figured it out, what the problem is. And once you know, it's so easy, in my opinion, to start addressing it and get it fixed in a healthy manner. All right, extend your left leg long, toes come up. It's good to get a professional opinion, professional diagnosis, some wisdom on how to deal with it, and then managing it. Tap back into your breath. Go ahead and cross your foot over, <clears throat> and we're going to get our pigeon on this side now. Oh. Remember, though, everything always relates. So not only am I just working on the QL, it's the tight foot hip flexor, cause the tight or the pulled angry QL, <clears throat> which is maybe, who knows, a weak glute, a little bit of an external rotation. There's all sorts of things can kind of add up. So it's peeling back the onion, finding the issues at the base, and then fixing it so it doesn't happen again. <clears throat> You're not in constant PT, massage therapy, chiropractic, stuff that you can manage and hold together on your own through adequate strengthening and stretching. Strengthening, stretching, so flexibility and mobility, definitely a trifecta breath work. Yes, it takes a lot of thought and a lot of work to stay healthy, but trust me, it's worth it. It's better than sitting in a waiting room at a doctor's office. <laughs> okay, sit back into that low lunge one more time. Gosh, it was good to get the weights out. Enjoyed it. That was fun. Hope you had fun too. And I will see you again tomorrow and we'll keep counting our way down. Have a good one.